Hi there. Let me take a few minutes to take you through example one on the samples bias and experimental design review. So first of all, I would hope you know what SRS stands for. Specifically, it means a simple random sample. Simple random sample. Hence the name SRS. So a simple random sample has a very specific definition that you want to know. Every sample of the same size is equally likely to be selected from the population. So every sample of the same size has the same chance being selected from the population. Let's say we're taking a simple random sample of 50 individuals from a population. That means every group or every sample of size 50 from that population has the same chance of being chosen. Now there are other types of samples that use randomness, such as a stratified random sample. In a stratified random sample, the population is separated into groups and then an SRS is taken from each group and these are combined together to form the sample. Another type of random sample is called a cluster sample. Here, the population is once again separated into groups, but the difference is an SRS of the groups is taken. So once we've broken the population into groups, we take a symbol random sample of those groups and everyone in the selected groups is combined to form the sample. So practice question number one, lower on the page, parts A, B, and C, applies SRS, stratified sample, clustered sample, in the context of sampling at our school. So I think it gives you a better idea of what these look like in context. I think it'll be helpful to do that question. In terms of experimental design, there are three characteristics that you want to make sure you understand. Control. And the most important type of control that we have is comparison. Within experiment, we want to be able to compare the response to a treatment to, for instance, a control group. So being able to compare between a treatment and a control group, if you will, compare responses, that is the most important way in which we can control. So randomization. The random assignment of subjects to treatments is critical. And replication. This means that we can't, we can't do our experiment on just a few subjects. We need many subjects. We need to replicate the treatments upon many subjects so that we believe that comparisons of responses, what we see within that comparison is a result of the treatment and not just a result of chance variability between the different subjects. So we can't just use a few subjects. Replication means we want to use many subjects. So a specific type of experimental design I would want you to be familiar with is a block design. A block design increases control by separating subjects based upon a factor believed to affect the response. A common variable on which to block is gender. If we believe that men and women will react differently to a treatment, then what we do is we block on gender. If we believe that the response we see will be affected by gender, then we look at men separately within a group and women separately within a group, and we randomize we randomize assignment to treatment and control groups and comparison of responses within each block. So if we were doing an experiment where we had blocked upon gender, essentially we'd be doing an experiment on men where men are randomly assigned to treatment and control and we compare the responses for the men. And then again, we randomly assign women to treatment and control groups and we compare the responses specifically for women. Comparisons are done within each block in that sense, then, blocks are another way in which 
we establish control because blocks hopefully allow us to make a more, a more valid comparison because we're making a comparison by trying to control for a variable we think may affect that response in that example being gender. So a specific type of blocked design is called a matched pairs experiment. Matched pairs experiment. That is a block design where each block consists of two subjects. So we have subjects that are similar and then one subject is assigned to a treatment group, one subject is assigned to a control group and then we compare the results between those two similar subjects. So another way that this is done, sometimes a blocked or a matched pairs experiment can be just one subject where we're comparing the response to two treatments in random order that are both being applied to the same subject. This could also be, for instance, like a before and after comparison, maybe a pre and post test type of study where each subject takes a pretest, goes through some sort of training, if you will, or some sort of treatment, and then we take a post test and we look at the differences uh, between the pre and the post test. We make that comparison for each subject. So again, matched pairs is just a special type of blocking. Hope this has been helpful.